So this is the Microsoft Surface Laptop Go. It's Microsoft's new 12.4 inch laptop, but the question is, can it run Photoshop or Adobe Premiere Pro? You're about to find out in this video. Hey there, I'm Mark Brown from Editor's Keys and welcome to the channel. Now, if you're interested in filmmaking or video editing, consider subscribing to the channel because we've got a ton of videos all about that subject. Now, I've recently done the full review on this laptop, so if you wanna check that out, you can click the link up here or the description below. But today we're gonna to see if this small budget laptop can run Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. Let's start with Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so let's open up Photoshop on the Surface Laptop Go and see how this runs. I'm basically gonna import a thumbnail that I've been working on and we'll see if we can edit some photos just to see how well it can run on this small little laptop. Okay, so here's a thumbnail we were working on um, earlier. This is for a free cinematic sound pack. Um, and, the, and you know, we'll use Photoshop to make our YouTube thumbnails. And you can see it's loaded up pretty well. You can see that if we delete that free, there's no real lag when you type, which is really, really nice. Let's just change that to um, whoosh. These are a set of whoosh sound effects. So you can see there that works pretty well. Everything acts as it should, and it actually has rendered Photoshop uh, quite nicely. You know, it doesn't seem to be much slow down there. Let's, uh, let's just do something silly. Let's add a little gradient on here across there. And you can see it's pretty, pretty fast. I mean, obviously we're not doing any crazy stuff here at this point, but just to show you, you know, if you're doing basic things like creating thumbnails, uh, this isn't gonna give you any problems at all. I think now let's load up a little image. Um, so let's open up this image here I've got from Unsplash, just to see how it handles some of Pho Photoshop's new computational photography. So first of all, let's just zoom in a little bit here and let's add on a brightness and contrast. Let's just take that up. You can see it actually reacts very, very fast. It's not like I'm dragging this slider around and it's taking a few seconds to, to do its thing. It's actually doing it on the fly at kind of real time. So let's add a couple more of these on here. I'm gonna do one for, let's do vibrance. Let's bring the sort of contrast, uh, the, sort of the colors really up. Let's pull that up there. The saturation looks good. You can see there that if we take off uh, these two layers here, what it looked like before and afterwards, that looks looking pretty good. Uh, maybe let's try uh, some curves. Let's just do a simple S curve. Let's just bring that down a little bit. You know, and this is, I know we're not doing anything crazy. I want to say that again, but this is kind of really the only things I, I generally would be doing in Photoshop, little bits of touch-ups for product photography, and that's working pretty well. Let's try some of the new features in Photoshop. So let's go back to this background layer here. And what I'm gonna try is the new sky replacement tool. I know this uses quite a lot of uh, data and computational um, computing power to do this. It's gonna read the sky, and you can see there, it's actually done it quite quick there. So I'm just gonna zoom out there. You can see that Photoshop has detected the sky, and it's uh, completely replaced it. So you can choose one of these uh, filters here. And you know what? It's actually doing that pretty quickly. I wouldn't say this is much slower than my 3,000 pound 13 inch MacBook Pro. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's output that to a new layer. And there we go. I mean, let's just take some of these things off that we've done. That's the before. And let's just turn these all back on again. And that's the after. So you can see there, there was no real lag there. Zooming in and out is pretty quick. If I just zoom in and out, let's see if multi-touch works. Let's just get the hand tool on. Nope, Did they changed that. I'm not sure, but anyway, it kind of zooms in pretty quickly. Let's zoom out and then let's just uh, Let's get the magnifying tool and let's just zoom right into there. You know, that is pretty quick. I've used, you know, more expensive laptops that seem to really lag when you do this kind of thing. So overall, for basic stuff, I'm pretty impressed with the performance in Photoshop on the Laptop Go. Now let's go into Premiere Pro. Okay, let's load up Adobe Premiere Pro. 
And as I've mentioned, you know, when I've used a Surface Go or even a cheap kind of netbook laptop for around 500 pounds, they can never run Adobe Premiere Pro. It's kind of like the Achilles heel in a budget laptop that you've got to kind of accept that you won't be doing any video editing. So I'm gonna try this. We've got a few 4K 100 megabytes per second clips that we're gonna try importing into Premiere Pro. So let's create a new project. Let's call this the test project. Um, we're just gonna leave everything on automatic. Click OK and let's get started. Okay, so it's loaded up Premiere pretty well. Okay, so let's import some media. I'm just gonna import a few clips that we've got on our desktop here. These are from last year when we were in the Manchester Christmas market. Oh, how good it was to be outside in the Christmas market. So let's import these, let's see how it does. We might speed through certain elements of this, uh, but just to give you a flavor, to see if this little machine can run Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, so it's imported the clips. That didn't take too long. We've got about, I think we've got about 10 clip, uh, eight clips here, all in 4K, all at 100 megabytes per second. So let's open up one of these clips. Okay, so let's just play through this clip. Let's see if we can even play this. A lot of low budget laptops can't even play a 4K clip in Premiere Pro, so let's play it. Okay, this is at half quality, and I don't know if you can make this out on the camera, but there's no skip frames. It actually seems to be running really, really well. So what I'm gonna do, we're not gonna do a proper edit here, but I'm just gonna drag a few of these clips onto the timeline. Okay, let's get another clip here, uh, just, outside the market. Let's play this one through. It's playing fine, it's at half quality. Let's just do a little mark in by pressing I on the keyboard. Actually, let's start it from there. Let's bring it over a little bit. Let's press O, I'm gonna drag that onto the timeline. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start layering up uh, this. So let's see here, what can we put over this? So I'm just gonna bring a couple more clips in Let's uh, get this clip up here. Let's just mark in there. Let's just, oh, actually let's mark in a little bit earlier. Mark in from there. Let's go just before we do a little wipe away, mark out there. And I'm gonna drag this uh, next to the clip to start with, and then we'll start piling up the clips just to see uh, if it can even even play this back. Let's just get this little clip here uh, out of me. Let's just see if this one's all right. Okay, that'll do. We'll just get that in there too. Right, so first of all, let's just see at half quality. I'll tell you what, let's even go full quality. Let's see what happens. So full quality, a 4K timeline. Uh, no edits as yet, but can this even play it? You know what? It's actually playing that pretty... Pretty well, I've got to say. I mean, these are 4K clips. I can't see any skip frames at the moment. These are 100 megabytes per second, and this is on a 500 pound budget laptop. That's pretty impressive, I've got to say. Now, let's just try putting these clips on top of each other because this is sometimes where things become a bit unstuck when you have uh, clips layered. I'm just gonna copy that clip as well. Let's just, uh, let's just, actually, let's bring another clip in, sorry. let's. Get a different clip in. Let's get this one here of the sausages. I'm just gonna pull that over here. So let's try and play this back. We've got a few clips now in the timeline. Let's play it back. This is at full quality, by the way. Okay, so it's playing back smoothly at the moment. Now I've got two clips. Again, smooth, no drop frames I can, no drop frames I can see at the moment. I mean, that is pretty impressive. I mean, let's take the quality down to half. I'm surprised it can even play it full. We've got some Macs in the office that struggle with this. So half quality, it's playing back pretty fine. This just goes to show you could edit a video together on this machine. Let's try a little bit of color correction on this. Okay, so now let's try and color correct a bit of footage. 
Let's uh, select this clip here, let's go into color. And I'm just gonna play around with it because again, this is where you really start to see the lag. So I'm just gonna go into, let's do some basic correction. Let's just whack up the exposure a little bit. Let's play around with the contrast. Let's, let's just go crazy. Let's pull the contrast all the way up here. Let's take the highlights down a little, a little bit. Shadows up a little bit. Shadows up a little bit so we can see the detail in the background. Shadows up a little bit so we can see the detail in the background. Let's take the whites down a bit. Let's take the blacks down a lot there. Uh, let's just change the temperature a little bit. Let's make it a bit more green. And let's just see if we can play that back. Again, playing back pretty smoothly. A little start there, but played back fine. Um, let's just, uh, what else can we do? Let's just get creative here. Let's. Do a bit of a faded film effect. Let's really sharpen it up. Let's adjust the vibrance. Let's bring that out. The sharpening looks ridiculous. Let's take that down a little bit. Saturation, let's pump that up. And let's play it back again. Again, absolutely fine at half quality. That's pretty impressive. Now let's try adding some graphics on. Why not? Let's go into here. Okay. Slowing down a little bit, nothing too bad. Um, okay, let's add some graphics. So I think, first of all, let's add in an angled bar effect there. Just drag it on top of the clip. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Let's just drag that in there. I'm gonna put that there. Let's put on a title. What should we go for? Let's go for something with a little bit of animation because Let's be honest, even the best computers with Premiere sometimes struggle when there's a little bit of animation involved. So I'm gonna put this here and let's just play these two things back. Can it handle this? <laughs> I'm pretty surprised by that. It's actually running everything pretty well. I'm gonna add a big title on there as well. Let's layer this up a little bit. Let's just uh, put this in between here. And let's let it, I know you wouldn't do this, but let's let it run over that a little bit there. Let's edit this text. Testing, edit. All right, now let's play this back. Little animation. A little slow back there, but it's playing fine, really. And I've got to say, I am pretty, pretty impressed with this budget laptop. Before, you could never do this on the budget end Surface laptops, or really any budget uh, micro, uh, sorry, any budget Windows laptop at all. Even you know a 12-inch or some of the lower end 13-inch MacBook Pros couldn't run Premiere Pro. You might get away with Final Cut, but definitely not Premiere Pro. So you know, if you need to edit a little video on the go this could be the machine for you. Maybe you're a student at uni and you wanna to put together some Instagram stories. I think this machine could just about get that done for you. Okay, so that was how Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro runs on the Microsoft Surface Laptop Go. Were you impressed or were you unimpressed? Let me know in the comments section below. And remember, if you wanna learn more about Photoshop or Premiere, we've got a ton of tutorials right here on the channel. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.